Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a viewer request from my Patreon, which I will have a link to below if you want to check that out. And this was a good one, kind of an update request on Voyager 1 and 2. And I think it's been almost two years since I've done an update on these two old school spacecraft, and there actually have been some updates. So let's catch up with Voyager 1 and 2, find out what is the latest going on with both of them, and for how much longer do we expect to hear from them. So as I mentioned, I did cover Voyager 1 and 2 back in 2023 when I made a video about how we possibly, accidentally, nearly tragically hung up on Voyager 2 for a couple of weeks. It is a pretty funny story, so I will post a link to that below in case you haven't already seen it. And that video was more of an intro to Voyager 1 and 2, which I'm not really going to cover here, so if you have no idea what Voyager 1 or 2 are, pause, go take a look at that video in the description, and then come back here for the update. But obviously, hanging up on either spacecraft is not a good idea because 40 plus years after they launched, we are still getting data back from Voyager 1 and 2. And this is extraordinary because both of these spacecraft are billions of miles away from us. That's right, billions with a B. They entered interstellar space in 2012 and 2018, respectively. And in fact, there's an awesome real-time distance from Earth calculator that NASA has on a website for both of these missions. So you can go see at any time of the day or night how crazy far these two probes are. And I'll post a link to that website in the description as well. Now, both of these spacecraft continue to explore interstellar space. And not only do we want them to continue doing that, but we want to continue to hear back from them for as long as humanly possible. So, in order to save energy, mission engineers at NASA's JPL deactivated Voyager 1's Cosmic Ray Subsystem Experiment on February 25th, 2025. And on March 24th, 2025, they shut down the Low Energy Charged Particle Instrument aboard Voyager 2. And this is hardly the first time that scientists have done this to keep the Voyager spacecrafts going. Both Voyager spacecraft have a power system based on generating electricity from the heat emitted from the decay of a radioactive isotope of plutonium. This radioisotopic power system loses around 4 watts of power from Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 each year. In the 1980s, several instruments aboard both spacecraft were turned off because both Voyagers had completed their investigation of the solar system's giant planet planets, which boosted the longevity of both probes. In October of 2024, NASA operators turned off Voyager 2's plasma science experiment to conserve power. That experiment aimed to measure how much plasma moves past it and in what direction. The Voyager 2 instrument had been collecting limited data in the years before its shutdown due to its orientation in relation to the flow of plasma beyond the solar system. And Voyager 1's own plasma science instrument stopped working correctly in 1980 and was fully turned off in 2007 to preserve power. Voyager 1's Cosmic Ray subsystem, which was shut down in February, collects data from a suite of three telescopes designed to study cosmic rays. This was integral in the Voyager science team's determination that Voyager 1 had exited the heliosphere, the sun's sphere of influence at the edge of the solar system. Voyager 2's low energy charged particle instrument, which was shut down in March, measured the various ions, electrons, and cosmic rays originating from the solar system and our galaxy. When Voyager 1 and 2 launched in 1977, they carried the same suite of 10 instruments. Today, they both have three. But after traveling a combined 29 billion miles to become the farthest human-built object from Earth, three is not sounding so bad. Suzanne Dodd, Voyager project manager at NASA's JPL, said in a statement earlier this year, The Voyagers have been deep space rock stars since launch, and we want to keep it that way for as long as possible. But electrical power is running low. If we don't turn off an instrument on each Voyager now, they would probably have only a few more months. And Voyager program scientist Patrick Cohen said, The Voyager spacecraft have far surpassed their original mission to study the outer 
outer planets. Every bit of additional data we have gathered since then is not only valuable bonus science for heliophysics, but also a testament to the exemplary engineering that has gone into the Voyagers, starting nearly 50 years ago and continuing to this day. The fact that the Voyager spacecraft are the only two human-made objects to reach interstellar space means that the data that they collect is unique. So the decision to switch off any instrument on either Voyager 1 or 2 isn't taken lightly. It is thought that shutting down these instruments on each spacecraft will probably give each craft another year before more instruments will have to be turned off. So as of now, it seems like both spacecraft will have three operational instruments throughout 2025 and then probably going down to two operational instruments in 2026. And it is hoped that Voyager 1 and 2 will eventually drop down to one operational instrument that hopefully will carry it into the 2030s. Which at that point, both spacecraft will have been operating for almost 60 years, which is just incredible. I mean, you know how people always say, oh, you know, they don't make things like they used to. However, of course, unforeseen circumstances could arise and change these plans. Voyager project scientist Linda Spilker said, Every minute of every day, the Voyagers explore a region where no spacecraft has gone before. That also means every day could be our last, but that day could also bring another interstellar revelation. So we're pulling out all the stops, doing what we can to make sure Voyagers 1 and 2 continue their trailblazing for the maximum time possible. Which I think is just an excellent attitude. I feel like I gotta put that <laughs> over my desk. Continue your trailblazing for the maximum time possible. Yeah. And this whole update reminded me that I used to listen to this podcast like a million years ago called Radio Lab. And I remember they did this episode called Space. Pretty sure it was Space. Where they interviewed Andrew Yen, who was the creative director of the Voyager Interstellar Message Project and Carl Sagan's widow. And they spoke with her in a lot of detail about how they came up with and thought about what would go on the famous gold-plated record on Voyager 1. How they just ordinary people like you and I were being tasked with coming up with this audio cultural Noah's Ark for humanity. I'll try and see if I can find that episode. And if I do, I will post it in the description. I really recommend listening to it. I remember it being so, so interesting. So yeah, that is the update. What do you guys think? Are you surprised that Voyager 1 and 2 are still up and running and sending us back data? And for those of you who remember these two spacecraft launching, did you ever think in your wildest dreams that in 2025 we would still be talking about strategies to still keep these spacecraft transmitting. It's crazy, but like a delightful crazy. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching guys and as always I will see you in the next video.